Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokish here at the Omaha, Nebraska Roads to Freedom hosted unconvention with the CEO and founder of the Roads to Freedom Foundation, David Demarest. And he is also a veteran of the LNC. He is currently serving as, as uh, one of the, what, what region? So region six representative for seven states. Now, I, I like to joke often that there's a big danger going to libertarian meetings. If you show up and you, and you go to the bathroom at the wrong time, you might come back and find that you're a party officer. And if you have, if you have region in your title, you're a real sucker for being volunteered to get stuff done. But these are the people who, who really run the party, who really get stuff done, who run the LNC, who maintain the framework for the rest of the party to be able to exist. And David has been involved. He's been a libertarian since... 1962 he's been a libertarian longer than there's been a party but you're also an air force veteran and an, an activist here in nebraska so I, I don't even know where to start with this we just had a wonderful evening here with dr ron paul um you've been able to bring a ton of amazing people together to this event and it is really unusual the strength uh, of the speakers that you have for this, which is a great testament to your ability to organize and a network. Um, what do you think so far and, and, and what are you accomplishing with this convention? So the, the purpose of this convention was to set the stage for a movement of building up the private sector. That's kind of the long-term goal and we're launching it here and we're gonna have a series of annual unconventions, but we're also gonna have regional uh, events focused on private sector elements like cash basis healthcare, the crypto industry, cash basis education, homeschooling, and uh, maybe even the privatized space industry. And the longer term plan is, of course, the big kahuna, the cash basis protection and adjudication industry. Getting government out of dispute resolution entirely. Yes, and that is uh, very doable. That's already on the way. We already have quite a bit of private adjudication. The, the really tough one is privatized protection, which is, of course, the military and the police. And the complicating factor, of course, is nuclear weapons, which makes it a, a bit more of a challenge. But it's kind of in the terms of uh, an exaggerated uh, roads discussion. You know, who's going to build the roads, who is going to protect us is kind of a major extension of that question. Wait, how could you name this thing Roads to Freedom? Don't libertarians hate the roads? I thought that was a... But this, one of the things I've been impressed with here is that uh, there, there has been a really strong cryptocurrency track. And you see a lot of people interested in that inherently as libertarians. Hey, government, we made our own money. Screw you. We don't need it anymore. Obviously, huge innovation. But if you're trying to focus on private innovation, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Well, why do you have so many libertarians here? So, like, well, shouldn't politicians like me be banned at, at an event? For, like, I'm, you know, as libertarians, all the big criticism that we get from people in the movement who are libertarian, small L, but not big L, is forget the politics, focus on the business. What's your take on that? So, we don't want to exclude anybody, even politicians that we might uh, be. Uh, uh, looking uh, with uh, concern on their top-down approach as a solution. We're not looking for top-down solutions. I've had it with the top-down approach. I want to take the bottom-up approach, build up the private sector, and move social services from the public sector to the private sector, problem solved. Now, just I, I don't mean to just be picking bones at the, 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 the language you use here, although you know I'm a pedantic, semantic jerk when I want to be. But you said top-down versus bottom-up. What I see with, with decentralization, especially with blockchain, blockchain technology, is that it's neither top-down or bottom-up. It's, it's sort of bottom-only, decentralized, like it's getting rid of the top. You think technology is, is going to create a trend in that, that we don't need top... We're, we're getting rid of the top-down, bottom-up paradigm entirely, that it's just decentralized power in society down to the individual I couldn't have said it better <laughs> so I caught you I got I so I, I'm helping with his messaging here yeah, right okay right, good. Yeah. all right yes so I, I want to I want to ask you about uh, about this bigger implication for the movement the, uh, focusing on technology innovation business 
when you're a lifetime member of the Libertarian Party, obviously invested in the party, what what would your message to the broader movement be on where focus should be applied, where effort should be applied? Is it innovating? Is it like is is it supporting campaigns? Is it being politically involved? Is there some balance and synergy, or some other thing you'd want to say about that? So you've heard of the 60-40 uh, rule. Well, I have a 75-25 rule. Okay, now, I only heard about the 80-20, and that was my mom saying, you can get 80% of the results for 20% of the effort. And I said, yes, that's how I get my homework done. But no, which, which is 60-40? So uh, that's old history. I want to focus on the 75-25, okay. right. and the numbers are arbitrary, obviously. My uh, idea is that the Libertarian Party should spend 75% of their effort on getting libertarians elected, 25% on building up the private sector. The broader libertarian movement would be just the reverse. 75% on building up the, and I think the correct terminology is the voluntary sector. Yes, yes I, I actually learned that term yesterday here and was like, we do not use that enough. Well, I got that from uh, Starchild with some help from Larry Sharp. So uh, he, uh, Larry focuses on the what he calls the consumer-driven market. I would extend that to the entrepreneur consumer-driven market. But uh, the correct terminology from my perspective is the voluntary sector versus the coercive sector. and. Uh, my uh, goal here is to focus on the voluntary sector. If we build that up, by definition, guess what that's doing to the course of sector? By definition, it is downsizing the course of sector. What you suggest, actually, I mean, I step back and go, 75, 25, you know, that, that actually makes a lot of sense because if, if the private sector people who believed in libertarianism were just putting anywhere near 25 percent of their activism effort into supporting candidates we'd have a libertarian president by now i mean like we, we'd have an incredible amount of resources and if the lp put 25 percent of its effort into directly supporting businesses that benefit from our policies and i don't mean cronyism i mean we're talking about mostly small businesses decentralized businesses but essentially everybody benefits from that that we'd be able to make a much better connection with the broader public about how our policies benefit people and actually enrich their lives materially. I would support that completely, but really the goal, you said the goal is to get a libertarian president. I think the no, goal... of course not. No, the no, goal, I'm just saying as one, as one benchmark that we'd have a superfluous amount of money to, to, to be competitive at least. Well, I want to rephrase that into getting a libertarian non-president. <laughs> Oh, so you're familiar with the platform, right? Exactly. I know exactly uh, where you're going on that, and I support that fully. Um, uh, it's time to downsize the course of sector and get competitive governance. Once we get competitive governance, then, and the key word is governments, uh, governance. The, the bad word is government, statism. Governance does not mean necessarily statism. You know, we can have all kinds of rules on how we work with each other. The problem is the formalized compulsory territorial government. And that is different from the broader definition of governance. So one last question here because this is really important. I'm really excited to hear that someone of, of your perspective who's been involved with this movement for so long. When, when I first got here yesterday, the first thing we started talking about, I couldn't, I, I, can't, I just can't shut up about this idea right now because to me it's like, Oh yeah, that's that's coming, and and you can't ignore it. And I mean the the the, the deluge of technological development that is accelerating exponentially, that is going to be rendering government, if not completely obsolete, relatively insignificant in our lives. The the, the benchmark that I use is that it's going to be down near five percent, twenty years tops. And you and and you shocked me because you said five years. And you're you're talking like Elon Musk self-driving cars in two years. Bitcoin in a few months, potentially displacing fiat currency, for that to happen in five years. I thought I was like really pulling people, people towards optimism. And then I meet you. Why are you so optimistic about this? Well, I think libertarianism makes me optimistic and that's my nature. And you know, if I wasn't optimistic, I would check out now. I think that's the way to look at life. 
Uh, some people, uh, maybe they're not comfortable with that, but that's where I'm at and I have no regrets. And I plan on sticking around here. I'm 77 and I'm shooting for 100 and I got a lot of stuff left to do and by God, I'm going to do it. Beautifully said, ladies and gentlemen, David Demers. David, do you have a website you want to promote? OmahaUnconvention.com, and we also have for the Roads of Freedom, it's R2, uh, the number 2, R2FF.org. Awesome. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the Internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.